Welcome to this short lecture on how grand challenges link together. My name is Ali Aslan Gumishai. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Hamburg and head of research group at the Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society in Berlin. We live in troubled times. For long, humanity sustained itself through the resources of this world yet recently started to consume them excessively and beyond its replenishable share. As a result, we cross planetary boundaries, that is, thresholds beyond which stability of the planetary system is at risk, and thus face catastrophes such as the climate crisis and biodiversity loss. At the same time, populism, extremism and the polarization of societies is on the rise and social cohesion is under threat. New digital means such as orchestrated misinformation campaigns aggravate and challenge peace, democracy and stability. A gloomy picture. And now the COVID-19 crisis has become a new grand challenge. However, it is not simply a decoupled addition to the list of challenges, but strongly interconnected with them. In this lecture, we thus ask, how does this crisis relate to other grand challenges? We will look at COVID-19 as a grand challenge in itself, its facets, strategies of engagement, and how COVID-19 relates to other grand challenges. Grand challenges represent fundamental social and ecological concerns, such as sustainable growth, societal cohesion, and even the digital transformation that require and elicit coordinated, collaborative, and collective efforts. They significantly impact human welfare and well-being. Grand challenges include issues like air pollution, biodiversity loss, deforestation, water and energy scarcity, pandemics, inequality, malnutrition, employment conditions, and climate change. Ferraro and colleagues note three analytical facets of grand challenges. They are complex, uncertain, and evaluative. So first, complexity. Grand challenges are characterized by interconnected problems, feedback loops, phase shifts, tipping points, and non-linearity. The COVID-19 virus is a global phenomenon, grows exponentially, and its impact and policy responses create novel challenges. Second, uncertainty. Outcomes of grand challenges are difficult to predict and forecast. They are multiple potential future states. In the COVID-19 case, we thus observe the creation of and the management with scenarios. Third, evaluativeness. Grand challenges are not only understood but also valued differently. They cut across jurisdictional boundaries, such as multiple professions, and are hence multi-jurisdictional. In the case of COVID-19, we see diverse judgments of the crisis, both across professions and in time. For instance, across professions, certain measures to contain and mitigate the crisis have been criticized as being too harsh or soft, given their impact on other facets of life. Judgments about measures have also changed over time. For instance, one could argue that the UK government has started with a strategy of herd immunity, but then revised its view and shifted towards a containment strategy. Three complementary strategies to engage grand challenges are participatory architecture, multi vocal inscription, and distributed experimentation. Participatory architecture relates to structures and rules that bring diverse, diverse actors across professions, sectors, and interests together to engage the grand challenge. For COVID-19, these are, for instance, the many open initiatives such as hackathons that allow anyone to join and offer solutions to tackle the pandemic. We can note that the institutionalization of such, initi of such initiatives in the sense of a prolonged architecture has not yet taken place. Multivocal inscription allows interpretive flexibility 
and multiple evaluative criteria amongst various actors to coexist. Symbols and words mean many things to many people. They are robust, but not rigid. This enables coordination without consensus. For COVID-19, this may, for instance, mean that actors with different views about its threat may still join in, identifying certain initial mechanisms of containment and caution. Distributed experimentation is about continuous and various testing that may generate small wins and small losses. Small wins may build up to success, while small losses can be put aside. For COVID-19, this has been taking place in some contexts, particularly across countries, oftentimes neither planned nor intended. For instance, the various measures for containment may yield diverse results and thereby become real-world experiments. The three facets highlight that the grand challenge is complex, uncertain and evaluative. As a next step, it is important to notice that the same is true across grand challenges. They are connected to each other. The 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals offer one type of overview of these grand challenges. Like any categorization, this needs to be handled with care. Particularly for grand challenges, these constructed boundaries are helpful and potentially harmful at the same time. They help to better capture the diversity of problems, and they are to be approached with caution as boundaries are fluid. This is why Sachs and colleagues emphasize six transformations along social, health, energy, ecological, community, and digital concerns. Again, it is important to note that addressing grand challenges requires to even think these six building blocks together. Ecological and social challenges, for example, cannot be fully engaged separately. Likewise, COVID-19 is a crisis with many faces. It is an education, employment, family, finance, health and healthcare, humanitarian poverty, social welfare crisis and more. The COVID-19 crisis is thus interwoven with other grand challenges. And they may not be separable, but are rather interdependent. Grand challenges face a complex coupling of human, technical and natural systems, resist easy fixes and have trade-offs, unintended side effects and consequences. So if you fix one problem, then two new ones may pop up. Now, increasingly, some scholars and activists link COVID-19 to climate change. First, a simple connection is that decreased mobility and travel, as well as production, has led to a drop in air pollution. This is a positive effect on, 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 climate, on the climate. Second, some question why a radical and disruptive response in engaging one crisis, that is COVID-19, is possible, while in another, climate change, it seems not. They advocate for a similar urgency and extensity of mechanisms. Here, parallels of crises are drawn. Third, there's a criticism that other, other grand challenges are not considered when developing measures to counter COVID-19. This would beg the question, how would mechanisms differ if they were to tackle COVID-19 and climate change simultaneously? Or COVID-19 and inequality simultaneously? Here then we see that grand challenges need to be addressed or at least considered together. With COVID-19 everything has changed and nothing has changed at all. For some time the world has been summarized with the acronym VUCA. VUCA stands for Volatility, Uncertainty, Complexity and Ambiguity. And I would add a P for paradox to read VUCAP. COVID-19 has then not transformed, but increased the state of UCAP. And the question remains, how to engage with this setting, this situation of fluidity? COVID-19 as a new challenge has further unfrozen the dynamic state of UCAP. This means increased volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and paradoxes. 
How can individuals, organizations and societies engage COVID-19? Here are some suggestions through coordinated, collaborative and collective efforts. Through robust action, that is action that advances a strategy while keeping options open as new developments occur. Through not only reactive responses, but active management towards a desired future state. Through participatory architecture, multivocal inscription and distributed experimentation. By embracing VUCAP, that is not only the acknowledgement of VUCAP, but the management of and with it. And by linking it to other grand challenges, that is to see how COVID-19 is connected to other challenges. The focus here is an outcome in other societal domains that is not worse than before and also better than before. We, we see, for instance, challenges to gender equality and increased potential for abuse at home and women facing more work, more care work than men, particularly at home. We also see challenges to social progress as people from lower social classes are harder hit as they, for instance, juggle to substitute school education at home or find it difficult simply to afford paying for lunch for their children, which was previously covered by the school. Or we see debates about data protection and privacy. Phone data may help identifying how the virus spreads, if it can be used by the state or other institutions. It can also be misused to check, coerce, and control people. As organizational and societal structures are uprooted, societal achievements may be re-questioned, intentionally or not. This is also why certain drastic measures are commonly time-bound, to make sure that they do not become the norm. Equally, the crisis brings forth debates about underlying structures, such as the economic system, and whether the system in itself is to be protected and cherished, or to be blamed and transformed because it was a cause as well for the crisis. Here, some voices essentially demand not a return to a pre-crisis state, but the development of a new system. Centrally then, individuals and organizations are finding new means to coordinate and advocate for their values and interests in such a time of flux. In some, COVID-19 challenges and even uproots social and societal norms, structures and practices. It requires mindsets, organizations and societies to be able to embrace volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity and paradox. To develop mindsets, strategies, practices that embrace diverse views and potentialities have a both and understanding, such as health and the economy, not health versus the economy, that are resilient and elastic so as to bend under the crisis without breaking. In terms of literature, I refer to the piece by Ferraro and colleagues already. It is a central article on engaging grand challenges published in organization studies. Watts and Commander connect mechanisms against COVID-19 to air pollution, and uh, George and colleagues offer a good overview into how management research can and is addressing grand challenges, and also links this to the Sustainable Development Goals. Finally, Sachs and colleagues bring these SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, closer together by focusing on six transformations that they believe are needed to achieve them. With that, thank you for participating in this collaborative open online course. Do stay safe and healthy.